Okay, so good afternoon once again, uh, class. Welcome to our ITDB 401 Advanced Database Application class. Today, it's, uh, it's a Sunday, it's June 20. Okay, so today we're going to work with complex uh, uh, creation of the view in Oracle Apex. So we have done already a simple view and we have applied that uh, view in a typical interactive report. And we even managed to make a page without uh, a navigation link, which is we'll just uh, link it to a separate uh, element, which is the command button. So you may check that uh, session that we have provided. I try my level best to write, uh, uh, write the, what do you call this one? <coughs> Small title. I think that we have some enhancement now in in our uh, e-learning. Okay. See, uh, I just managed to write uh, from the recorded session we have. If you are absent uh, during those days, or if you want to to replay this one or review, at least I I put the small title. Last June 16, we have performed <coughs> a dynamic action. And we came back to uh, customizing the interactive report. And previous session to that one was uh, we had done several server-side condition. And we had done the first uh, uh, view during that uh, session last June 14, and along with the interactive report. Right. So it's uh, at least uh, starting from June 1, I, I, I put some small title on that. It would be uh, easy for you to, uh, to search whether you want to perform this particular uh, session, at least uh, you can you can just jump ahead on this link. OK, but today we're going to work with complex. Uh, why complex? A complex, uh, um, what do you call it one? Um, view, because uh, during the time that we have first created the view on last session, last June 14, it was only very simple. It was only uh, an equal join. I believe I have even used your uh, midterm schema using order system, right? And as a matter of fact, we just only make uh, a simple equal joining. So a logical and and uh, equivalent of the foreign key and primary key. That's it, particularly on the table of the transactions. So but we have pulled out the information um, from the product and the customer so that we could uh, get the information for them. And actually, that's a typical um, join, uh, equal join that we have done. So this time probably we'll be working with with uh, some aggregates, working with group by, and as well as uh, some aggregation of sum and count maybe. And we will also work with multiple tables that we will be joined, right? So literally, we will make like an advanced SQL at the moment particularly in joining and we will apply that one uh, on your on your um, creating creating of the view so especially of course if you want to create a report so report is not just barely coming from the populated uh, parent uh, table we need the transaction which means suppose you have an e-commerce uh, website no application and you wanted to to analyze your data, right? So which means either you count them or you sum or do some aggregates, and you want also to see that uh, from which uh, customer had been purchased all of those products. And if you want to also to monitor or to make some uh, reports such as inventory system, we can also do that. So, okay, so let me just allow me to head on to our e to our Apex, uh, using my hands Apex credentials. And we will just uh, see first, maybe one of the application that you have created, right? And it's, I think it's about order, order system, right? And let me just uh, open up this one and let's run it. So last time we have created, I think it's, uh, It's a report coming from a, from a created uh, view, and we made that one as 
a, a view, of course. So you can see here that we have a transaction report. So we can just revisit this one first before we jump to another uh, development using another report. We will create another creation, creation of a view. And this would be much more interesting because this is a bit complex SQL because we will going to create a view which are related each other, view by view by view, something like that. So in the transaction report we have done previously, it's just uh, it's just a combination of the of the order table, uh, the customer table, and the product table. So basically, this is not now the actual table. This is already coming from your creation of the view. So you can see that the order ID was there, order date. Definitely, they came from the order table, right? Product ID, product name. Uh, this is definitely came from product table and quantity. I believe it's also in the order date. Customer and cost name is is definitely coming from your. Your customer table, so if you will check the source code of this one, you may just only edit this page so that you will know which uh, what name of that uh, object or uh, particularly in the in the in the view so we can edit that page. And you can see the transaction report here in the content body. So we can check it out. And of course, by default, we just make this one only an interactive report. The source is type table slash view. So this is the name. So I think this is Fatima's ID, I believe so. So which means this is the name of the, the view. And let's uh, check it out on our object browser. And uh, let's search for this uh, view which we have created before. And oh no, it's not table, by the way, it's a view. Okay, let's check uh, this one. Okay, this. Okay, now this is the object that we have created previously. So it comes with uh, column names, aliases as well, along with the respective data types. And you can still check it out for the codes that we have done uh, on, on that session. And you can do some editing somewhere here. So you can see it's only a typical. It's only a typical equal joining, not even a join clause were there. Why? Because it only came from three tables, uh, order table, <coughs> product table, and customer table. So this is quite simple. We just make an equal join on the customer table via the customer ID must be equal to the order ID of that customer ID. So which means uh, we are only making an equal uh, equal joining. But with the logical and because we need to pull out the product information as well and and the transaction definitely because we have an order there. So we have an equivalent of the product table via the product ID must be equal to the order table by a product ID. So you can see that uh, every single select statement, if I will just copy this select statements, it's the same that you have seen on your interactive report. Let me go now to SQL command, copy paste it and run that one. You can see the same. For now, this is only the information we had, right? For now, because this is uh, this transaction is uh, pretty much only coming from the customer ID. So which means only one transaction had been done at the moment. Of course, uh, if we want to populate this one for, for the meantime, just for for this activity today, so that we could aggregate how many orders done by customer ID, right? How much it costs it, uh, probably if this has a cost, so that uh, we could multiply this uh, iPhone uh, 6S uh, to the quantity of this and then probably another customer will do that another transaction. So we can check the transaction table. Of. Uh, of that one, I think that is coming from her ID. To full, this is your ID. I think it's. Uh, uh, Fatima's ID, right? Student ID. Right. So let me just uh, search on to that schema, right? And 
let's check first the customer customer ID that we have it here. So okay, this is one Abdullah, forty one Mona, okay, sixty one and twenty one. Okay, example probably we have already transaction by Abdullah. So let's make one transaction for for Omar example twenty one. And let's uh, check out first with the products. 21 is Omar. And OK, 1, 2, 3, 4. OK, safe example. This is the product. But this time, since we will do aggregations, uh, aggregation, so which means we might be adding one more field here for the price, right? For the price, right? So which means uh, we don't have yet price here. So that. Uh, Every time the transaction will going to order a quantity there, that should be multiplied on the product quantity. I mean the product price. So if you ordered Nike sport shoes, uh, one quantity and that costs you 25 of money real, you should have to pay for 25 money real. But if the Nike shoes had been purchased uh, two items, so that would be multiplied by 22 by 25 reals. So now it becomes that 50 reals, right? So for now, let's customize uh, this table because we will provide some report uh, how much you purchase and what would be your bill on, on purchasing on product and how many quantity have you have been purchased. OK, so we can add on one field here common uh, column which is we'll try to add with one column like a price right we'll just men mention price we'll just mention price it should be number because uh, we could not easily aggregate especially on some uh, having some uh, functions if it's they are not number all right so let me just uh, leave it like this just uh, price and number and then finish OK, this is uh, an added uh, field now on your on your product table and we put some price there. OK, we'll just randomly enter a price at the moment. Example for iPhone is price is. 350 one areas apply this one. Okay. Example for a Nike shoes, a sport shoes uh, cost you about. Uh, 25 reals. Right, and example for a computer table is just simp uh, price of uh, 15 reals example. Right. Now let's go back to the transaction again. OK, our transaction table is basically your order. Right. Safe example, since we have used uh, already Abdullah, Abdullah, we, uh, we have already record purchased by Abdullah say we let's try to add the uh, Omar. Omar uh, with a customer ID, a cost ID, which is 21. I'm not uh, populating using the form, right? But you can also perform that one, of course, using your master details. For now, I'm just entering some information here for the meantime. So just to perform our um, complex uh, creating of the views of these reports. So this time, let me just go to one product and example Omar will purchase uh, a product ID three, which is a Nike sport shoes with a quantity of one. OK, so Omar ID is 21 uh, and uh, he will go into order product three. OK, so let me jump in the order ID. All right, and we will insert a row, insert a row. All right, so the order ID, of course, wait, this is uh, this is auto increment because this is already coming with uh, a trigger, so we don't need to enter there. So the customer ID is 21. Product ID is three. And quantity is one. OK, All right, so anyhow, the order date is uh, not null for now, right? It's OK, so we'll, we'll just create that one. So there you go. So we have populated now another record from our order table. If you will check and refresh the uh, our grid, I mean our interactive uh, report. Now you can see Omar 
was there with the customer ID 21 because this is already created. We have done this report already before, right? Probably we add some more. Uh, Omar again, and he will purchase number two, I think, example. Insert again, and let's say Omar is 21, and he will go into purchase number two product, and he will purchase two example, two tables. I think number two is tables, and create. And let's see, refresh this uh, report. And there, see Omar again purchase, but he purchased a couple of tables there. All right. Now, I think this is fair enough. Uh, at least uh, Omar will, will be going to be uh, aggregated later. Right. And suppose example, if I could uh, make uh, uh, an order date there, let me see. Where's the ordering form here? All right, and let's go to Abdullah. I don't know, not yet Abdullah. Uh, I think Omar. All right, so wait a minute. So I think. Uh, all right, there, Abdullah is there. Um, let's just put some dates here. Just uh, any random date for now. Say, for example, if this will be accepted, so that was last June one example. All right, and we'll see if uh, refresh this one. Wait a minute, What's the table, the order. Yeah, date is already captured there. And let's go to Omar. And say, for example, see, he's having to purchase now. So let me just put on dates there. And example, he purchased one uh, June 4, apply changes. And the other one is also June 4. And there you go. And let's save this one. Uh, it's already saved. And let's uh, refresh this one and let's see that the date had been. OK, sorry. And been entered though. There you go. See? Right now, first let's perform now by using an aggregation. Aggregation means uh, either we can count or sum up the product that they have purchased, which means uh, how many product have been purchased by, by Omar and Abdullah. So obviously Abdullah only one because uh, the quantity was, oh no, no, five, I'm sorry, five. So we can aggregate this one, how many products? And later, we can also make uh, an aggregation of group function using, um, with the multipli multiplying the product quantity into the product price. So we can see also how much the, the cost now that each one of these uh, uh, customer had been purchased, right? So that would be another uh, view for that, right? So this time, let's. What we will do, we will just hang on to to SQL commands at the moment. Okay. So let me just uh, because this time I need to see the schema itself. Let me copy and paste another page here so that I could just open a SQL statement there at the moment. Right. Right. Working on a complex uh, SQL statement. It's not advisable to just directly create your view. You have to check first whether your, your, your command, I mean particularly on creation of the view, should be working first. And the required output is you are seeing while you are testing it from the SQL command. So what we will do first is, let's say, we will going to count, we will going to count all the all the uh, product based on the quantity, which is grouped by group by group by the order ID. OK, so that we can see uh, that each one of this uh, group ID of the order will be later will be linked to another view that we will create another one and put them all together with using a left join. So first 
what we will do is let's count each one of the product quantity which is purchased by each of the order because anyhow the order id must be the same see oh, order id I, i'm sorry this is uh order id is is it came uh, it came different here let me see example okay uh, this is an order id by the way order id is unique yes definitely it's unique so which means what we were going to work with via each one of this customer right each one of this customer so let me check the constraint uh, of this order id yes order id is unique so which means uh, each one of these order id is unique so which we will just uh, take it from we will just take it from each one of this customer right each one of this customer and that would be another type of uh, of transaction okay so let's head on to our sql command and we will write a simple sql command for using a group okay using a group right so select uh, select um, we will select first um, customer id okay customer id mm. and then count count make a, an aggregation for that one we will count the okay so this one oh no 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 which means we will sum right right we will sum take the sum of each one of these uh, quantity okay sum not count sum okay sum of the the quantity right i will just copy this one quantity okay from which table of course from this table from this table which is uh, this id mentioned over here right okay but this time we need to group by group by uh, the customer id because we wanted to see the sum of each one of these uh, okay wait a minute uh, because this is basically invalid um this table is sometimes it won't be working with because this is a typical view now right okay let me show you the view now it comes with a double quote okay right look at this customer id uh this is what he purchased uh five five items customer id 21 he purchased how many items three but basically it's only i think it's only one item because it was uh, only the same product see the same product right so which means either of course you have to multi uh, you have to you have to take consideration of this another product for this so this is uh, product number two i think it's a table product number three i think it's uh, what was product number three product number three is a nike okay it's a nike shoes okay so literally they have different items but it sum up the number of uh, items there so which means we have three items had been purchased by this customer and five items had been purchased by this customer id so now this time what i will do is i will going to uh, make uh, a quantity here i mean an alias as maybe i will make this one as uh no number of items okay num n uh, n o of item okay no or nos of item okay so that will be having an alias there there you go so i will copy this one I will go in to copy this and then now I'll head back to my object browser and create a view for that one. Create a view. Now I will name this one as, um, okay, by the way, uh, 
this is uh, 4, 4, 4, 2, 4, 2, S, 1, 6, wait, wait, 4, 2, S, 1, 6, I think this one down, okay, but I will make this one as order, order underscore items, all right, is it the same though, let me see, is it the same? Uh, 46S, okay. So 46S, all right. So remember the name um, of the first view. Let me just make this one as view B3, uh, B2, because we have the first one already. All right. So I will paste the SQL statement here, which we have performed. And now I will create this one. And later this will be the name of the view. And I will just click next and create the view. OK, so definitely now it's created the view. Now you can even check that the view has a data, see you, with the customer ID and uh, NOS of item. Right, customer ID and NOS of item. So this time what we will try to do now is we will make a SQL statement that each one of these items will be linked to your product table. Why? Because we need to multiply each one of these uh, quantity that you have purchased, whatever the price of that product ID. OK, so which means again, uh, let's uh, head back to our SQL uh, command. And what we will do is we will make a relationship of uh, two we will make a relationship of uh, two tables, which are the product and the order. OK, so select. Let me just uh, make a star first. Select ast uh, asterisk from. We'll make two tables first, which is one from the order. Or probably, though, uh, since we have already uh, the view, right? We have already the view, and I think we can multiply that one already. I oh, no, no, it's okay. So this is a different view. Make it another view, which uh, number three view. Okay, now I will make this order. Right. Okay, but this is a view. Huh? This is a view. I will make a double quote here. Comma. Another one is this. Uh, product because we need to pull out the product this this price later right now I will make that one two views okay so where all right where this view of this uh, I mean this table order okay wait a minute just copy the whole thing this table dot uh, the order, order ID, where is the order? Yes, this one. The order ID must be equals, must be equals to the product table, must be equal to the product table via the order ID as well, uh, which is uh, product table, where's the product table? Okay, this is the product table. And prod ID, okay, take note uh, with the, uh, with the fields, okay, prod ID. Okay, let's test first this one though. Okay, um, okay, it's uh, where, okay, now the reason why we are doing this because we will be uh, working later with your, with your order, uh, with your, uh, what do you call this one? With your order, word order table. Is it I have linked to the order table? Yes, order one and this one. Let me just, probably this one uh, must hang on to this. I'll try to work on this one. Okay, so, okay, so we don't have data at the moment. All right. We're supposed to have now a data for this. One second. Let me just copy this one down. Let's see how the view had been created over here. 
Oh, by the way, this one. Let's see the view. Okay, this is the first view. And the double coat is uh, very important actually. Okay, okay, the double coat is only intended for, okay, no problems, only for the table only. All right, only for the table. Okay, so we don't have any issue to this. Right, we don't need to do this one anymore. So which means uh, either the way, this is no issue of creating uh, for this and this one for this one, right? Oops, uh, there are two tables, right? Okay, so anyhow, we don't have any uh, product there. So which means the, the product, the order ID, by the way, I'm, I'm, I'm working on the order ID. So which means the product should be equivalent to that one. So why I put it in the product. So let's go back to the tables. And we have linked it to the different uh, item, by the way. So let's go back to the orders again. We need the order. We need the product, by the way, the product ID. Product ID from the order, right? Product ID, this one. Uh, no need to double it though, so that you'll not be confused. We just remove this one though. Okay, from the product, uh, from the order ID, we need this uh, product, product ID. And from the product table, we need the prod ID, I think, yes, prod ID, which is there. I think this should now, having a result, All right? This is what I need to see, All right? Again, the reason why I make a relationship between order and product, because later we will, we will multiply <clears throat> the quantity, the quantity of the order from the price of the product, okay? From the price of the product. So I just make only first uh, a star to see each one of these, uh, each one of these uh, items uh, will appear. But the, the most important is I should know which, which column needs to be pulled out here. So only I need to know is to get the product uh, price and multiply from the number of quantity that you have purchased, right? So I think that uh, this is prod quantity. We need this one, right? We need this one and we need also to take the customer ID as well. Okay, let me just pull out the customer ID. Okay, this is the customer ID. I will show the customer ID. Okay, I will show this customer ID because we need to see the customer ID, of course. Customer ID that will going to will going to order these items. Okay, I need to see also the product quantity and the price. <clears throat> product quantity, oh wait, uh, the product first, the product ID. <clears throat> okay, so the product ID is coming from the product table, or product view. <clears throat> okay, uh, product uh, dot, <clears throat> product uh, ID. Okay, and then I need to see also the, okay, the product price, all right, the product price, okay, comma, the product price, okay, this is price, all right, now this time is, I need to see the quantity that you, uh, that you have purchased, that is coming from the order table, all right, the order table. So which means now this time that uh, the quantity, which is product quantity. Now, now, the interesting part here is, let me put a comma. I will going to multiply now 
I will now go into multiply. Okay, if you want to see if this works, okay, I will run this one now. Oops, uh, product quantity invalid identifier, one second. Mm. Product quantity. Uh, this is from the order. Mm -mm. Okay, wait, wait a minute. You, we might have been missed some fields here. Let me cut this one first. In bad, oh wait, right. Okay, so I think I have a mistake in one of the, one of the field here. This is uh, prod quantity is I think uh, this is coming from another table. Let's see. Yes, let me check uh, the quantity of the order. Uh, I'm sorry, quantity only. Okay, so this is only quantity. Only quantity. Okay, I think now we're good. Now, see the output now. Customer ID 1 is Abdullah and Omar, I think, is 21, right? This is the product ID that he purchased, that they purchased. These are the price for each one of those products. See, oh, price of this uh, is 350. Probably this is iPhone. This one is one table, I think, and this one 25 is the, is the shoes. Now, the quantities are there. So what we will do is we will multiply these two and make another column using a, an expression so that we can see the price of this quantity of uh, the total price now. So only we need to pull out is we need to get the product price. Another field, of course, and we'll just name that one as total price. Uh, multiplied by the quantity. Where's the quantity? Here. Here's the quantity. And now what I will do is I'll make an alias total price. Total underscore price. And I think I'm good. If I run this one, there you go. See, the output is 5, uh, 350. 5 into 350 is uh, 1,750. It's correct. One, in, 1 is to 25 is 25, of course. 2 is to 15. Multiply this one, in, which is 30. So now this time, what we will do later is we will sum up all of these because this is the total price of one of these products. But we cannot do this one at the moment here. Otherwise, because this is, uh, this is returning value of uh, two seal, right? So we cannot uh, do this one later. We can make an aggregate for another view for this. Okay, now I have done this one because later we will make a view out of these and we will see how uh, this, the total price of these, 25 plus 20, 30, should be added because this is belong to one customer ID, right? This is 2121. So I will copy now this one. I will copy now this one and create the second view now. Create the second view, right? So, so that will not be confused. Uh, uh, let me come back to this uh, views that we have. Okay, the first view that we had was uh, V2, uh, V2, just today, right? Because this one before. Now I will make order items B3, okay? So I will going to create a new view. And that is, uh, what is that ID, by the way? Uh, 42S16, okay. Okay, 42, okay, it's over over there. So I will just make this one version of view three now. Okay, this is a view three. But okay, this is order items version uh, view three. Okay, now I will paste the view that we have created here. And now click next and this uh, second view will be now be created. There you go. Right, so what you have noticed here that the data is uh, basically it only shows the prices for each one of the item the total price for each one of the items this is also good report at least you can see each one of the item how much it will cost you 
especially if you have if you have written the amount there. Now, of course, at the end of the day, you will still need to see the whole uh, total price of these. If you have purchased two items, of course, it will be sum up this uh, total prices, 25 and 30. For this Abdullah, customer one, it's only one item. Uh, I mean, uh, yes, only one product, but five items he purchased. So he has already the total there. We will make another view for this to aggregate this and take the sum of this one. Remember, the first view that we have done today, we have only sum up the number of quantity. But regardless, because that is different items, right? But the more, most important is this total price. So the total price will be, again, will be aggregated. So I will use this table or this view, by the way, this is not the table anymore. This is the view and we will create. OK, let's open that view. We will create another view that will going to aggregate this items three version uh, uh, view three, this one. We will make another view. So again, I will go to your SQL statement or SQL command. And let's say select first. We do the select before we write on the grouping by. Okay. Okay, wait, wait. Uh, this one needs to be have double code because this is a view, right? All right, there you go. So what we will do, we will going to group by customer and we will just take the total price of these. Total price of this one. So we will sum the total price. So this time I will just uh, I will just make uh, the customer ID will be the first column to be displayed and sum of aggregate for this one is for your total price. But don't forget this is a group by function. We will write a group by wait wait so that you can see the whole code. We will write a group by group by customer ID. And I think we're good. So if I run this one now, there you go. See. Total price. OK, let me just write uh, an alias here. This is total price, total underscore price. All right. Now if I run it again, see customer ID and total underscore price. These are the total price that uh, the, I, the the customer needs to pay 55 Omani reals for this customer ID 21 and 1750 for for this uh, customer ID. So once again, I will going to copy this uh, SQL command and I will create now the third version of of the view. Which means uh, this will be a new view, which is, oh, by the way, what is that ID? 46S. Okay. Well, 46S. Four. It's over there. I will make this one version. Uh, uh, this is uh, number four now, view four. Okay, now I will copy paste this one now and execute this one so that it will be saved and you will be end up of another view. So this time we are now seeing that we have created actually to just today huh, uh, version uh, view two for order items, view uh, view three for order items and view four for order items because the view four will show you the aggregation of the group by of each one of the or the total price, some of the total price for each customer. The, ver, uh, the view three other items is just for each items. We can still use this one in some other uh, interactive report. At least you can see the split of each one of the items, right? So you can see that each one of those, those prices will be there because it's uh, it's uh, customer ID is mentioned there. And if you remember the view two that just we started, this is only number of items. This is not as per, uh, this is not as per, uh, what do you call this one? As per product, huh? 
this is the whole product. Regardless of how many product, it should be added though, right? Now, you remember the old uh, view that we have created previous class, and I think that was, uh, this, is, uh, this is the one, product underscore report one. Product underscore report one, this one, right? Which is already linked here in this, uh, in this, in this transaction report, in this transaction report. Now, we can use this transaction report, which is, uh, that is uh, uh, product underscore report one, and then we will going to link that one to B3. I mean the order items B3. Okay, so this is now using a view to view. We will join a view to view, and we will link that one to your uh, to your uh, customer ID. We will link that one to your customer ID. Right, the customer ID will go going to have a relationship via the customer ID of this uh, view product underscore report one into your um, order items underscore v3 via this customer id also okay how to do that one okay now let's try to work first with let me so that i'll not be confused i will open an, another tab because we don't have a schema to to check this is how to work with multiple views we have to look for the schema that you have created right so now i need this b3 I need this uh, product report. Okay, let's just hang on first with a simple query. Select star or oh, asterisk from this view. This is the previous view that we have created last meeting, actually. Let me, I'm sorry, uh, it should be double code. Okay, now, this is what we need, and we will going to what? We will going to link this one to your order items underscore V3 using left join, using a left join. So I will capture this one, copy, and then using a left join, right? So which means uh, I need to put this one uh, double quote, right? On, okay, of course, we will going to reference this one, this this one, or oh, I mean, uh, first uh, this table first, so that you'll not be confused. We will reference the table product, underscore report one, product underscore report one via the customer ID, via the customer ID. I will copy this one, dot, customer ID must be equals to the order items underscore V3, order items underscore V3 via which uh, field will be via this, okay, I'll show you the data, via the customer ID also. But this is coming from the, uh, the view three, huh? which, is, which is pretty much is only sum up all the prices. Okay, and this one. Again, let's review this one. I just mentioned star. It will pull out all the fields of these two tables. Literally, this is now reference or joining of two tables, but basically these are not two tables. These are all views. Remember this view that we have created was somewhere here in this um, uh, activity, I think, which was uh, last June. Wait, where was that one? That in last June 14, right? Last June 14, we have created that that view, which is product underscore report one. Okay. So what I did now, out of the three views that we have created, I just only use this uh, this uh, order items. But if you want, we can still add on the version of uh, the view two, so that we can see the total number of items. Okay. Well, how to do that one? Of course, we will make another left join. Copy this one. Right. Uh, left join. Left join to that view, 
which is only will show you the total numbers actually. On same like this one also, because we need to get the customer ID of that report must be equals to this view of that first one we did today. But from what? It should be also customer ID. All right. Now, this is now literally three views that we have joined in. The first view was the product underscore report one, which we have uh, done this one last June 14. And today, I did not use the, the view, the view one, I don't know what, the view four, uh, no, 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 which one? Um, by the way, which view uh, I have done? I have done three views, right? Or only two views? It doesn't matter, right? But I just only use V2 uh, and V3 because the V3 is the most important. Okay, wait a minute. The V4, where's the V4, by the way? Where is the V4? B3 is all about mm -hmm. I have made three views by the way. I think I need only to refresh this one. Yes, yes it's three views there. Right, right. I'm sorry. We need this uh, version uh, view 4 by the way. I need this view 4. Why I made uh, we will not use the B, V3 because it, it's a uh, uh, multiple entry of the of the customer ID will come there. So we will use B4, not this one. B4 and this one also B4. All right. Okay. Via customer ID, same. No problem. Right. It's okay. So which means uh, it will be reference to the report which is via customer ID as well. And uh, the B2 is the first one we did today. Okay, now literally now these are three views. If we will run this one, okay, invalid table, one second. Okay, this one with double quote, All right? With double quote, okay, run this one. Invalid table name, one second. Again, this one, double quote, All right? So be careful with the views. It should come with a double code. Yeah, there you go. For now, you might be confused because there will be a repetition of the customer ID. So many. See you. Customer ID, customer ID, customer ID. Right. Because I just made what? I just made a star. All right. I just made the star. If you want to make this one specifically intended only for each one of the field, we can do that one as well. If you don't want to show because at the end of the day, we will make another view for this because this is now the final report that we will apply as your as a part of your interactive report. Right. See, you can see now that Abdullah. Uh, OK, product name was there. I'm sorry, uh, B2. OK. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. We sure not supposed to. Oh, okay, it's okay because. No, no, no. We are not supposed to link this one to your. To your report one. Why? To your report one. Because. It was mentioned. Uh, where's the report one? It's the product ID is mentioned there one by one. See, all right. So which means uh, we're not supposed to link that one there. So otherwise, uh, we'll remove that other table for that one. Okay. So we don't need this product report because it will clash. The product ID will not match now to the total sum number of items. So probably we'll just use this two, right? We'll just use b4 and b2 okay b4 and b2 okay let me just copy this one and i'll put it somewhere here right b4 and this one also b4 okay 
you see how the development works basically the development really started uh, for for checking all the codes before you came up with the report all right once again it's my mistake i'm not supposed to link that one to the report uh, previous uh, table uh, view that we have created because it's uh, the 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 product ids mentioned each one of their seal it's not yet been aggregated or grouped by right so i just link the the two views b3 and b4 right and i mean b2 b2 and b4 right b2 and b4 okay so now you can see that this is just literally two tables wait wait uh, this is b4 i'm sorry this is b2 this is b2 this is b2 and b4 okay i think this is good now okay wait b2 okay i'm sorry with the customer id over here should be mentioned here all right and i think we're good there you go see customer id one he purchases five items but the items were not listed uh, because it's in the v3 right we will not uh, link that one to this because it would be multiple rows will appear and customer id was mentioned so only the problem is teacher why this customer id appears because each one of these two reviews have the customer id later we will write the specific uh, um fields over there and the most important is this total price okay if we will check customer id first column nos of item came from b2 came from b2 remember that one customer id the third column and total price came from b4 okay now i can now specifically write this in the field okay the first field so that it will not be having a double uh, customer id there uh, dot customer ID comma B2 on NOS of item dot NOS of item comma okay let me just write it on the next line um, B4 but we will not include now the customer ID because it's already there in the B2 so i will write here and that total price and i think we're now finished okay let's run this one and there you go literally only three columns but it came from complex sql so we need this one for us to for us to filter whoever logins later and we can see who is the customer ID by applying an LOB here. Okay, now I will capture this one and I will make this one another view for a version five, or view five though, All right? We'll make another view. Okay, I'll show you first the view here. Yes, you see the um, underscore four, huh? And I'll make another view, which is uh, four, okay. I'll make this one number five and copy paste this uh, last view that we have uh, created this time. And now this is the final one. Maybe not yet final because it comes only with ID of the customer. And copy this one so that we could try to query this one. And done. Right. So now this view will be later be applied from your application. Right. See the data now, it has customer ID, number of items, and total price. So which means this customer ID, if you want to see their names, we can make, uh, what do you call this one? We can make the name aliases of, uh, I mean, uh, LOBs for this one. So now let's head back to our transaction, I mean, to our application. And this one is transaction report, right? It's detail. And maybe we will make here total price. I will make another total price here. So again, now I will 
edit this application and create another page, which is later we will link that one to your final, uh, I mean, uh, B5, I believe that uh, view, but this will be a report because this will be an interactive report. Okay, we will do the same thing. It will not be co connected to your navigation. Okay, let me just write this one here as, uh, what is this one? Um, okay, transaction. Okay, I will name this one transaction. Uh, total price, uh, no, no. Right, total price, right? And okay, suppose with the breadcrumb with uh, connected to your home page, but it will not be connected to your navigation. Okay, I will not associate it this one because we'll make a command button there. Now, this time we need to select for the name of the view, so we'll search for that view. And remember, the view that we have uh, created uh, was. Uh, What's what's the name of that view, by the way? This one. Okay. Um, search for that view. <clears throat> Underscore five. This is okay. There you go. See, it's a view, not a table anymore. Right. Order items. Underscore items. Underscore B five. And create now this one. So this time. We can now run this one for now, but it's not yet linked to any one of your uh, of your pages here. Otherwise, we will just head back to our home page and create another button there for now. But remember, what's the page number of this? This is page 10. OK, so which means uh, we will have to edit and create a button to page 10 link to that uh, particular report. So I will add another button here just like this one transaction button all right so let me just add another button uh, oh, with be hot uh, button here okay maybe i'll just put it over here there and i will name this one as transaction or short trans underscore total price total okay total only and what is the okay i will just complete this one uh, transaction uh, total price and by the way what's page is this page six now okay and i will link that one to behavior which action is not submit but rather direct to a page in in this application and that would be page six page six i will write here page six and click okay make it sure that is page six okay all right now let's try to refresh this oops it's not showing the name i think uh there's some property needs to set again okay, it's icon though make it uh, text and save or probably uh, with the icon save Okay, transaction report, transaction total price. And then there you go. One second. This is not page six. What was the page last page we created though? I think. Uh, yeah, it was page six though. Let me run this page six. Not page six, not page six. Wasn't page six. I think that is page. Page 10, I think it's page 10. OK, it was page 10. OK, let's edit that. Uh, that button, it should be page 10. Edit. And this transaction total. And it should be page 10. So now this time we're good. Now you can see uh, I will going to show you now the link. The transaction total price now shows the customer ID. If you want to know the customer ID um, LOBs, of course, we have to apply. Otherwise, if you have already LOBs here, 
we can just select that customer ID and make that one as list of value if you have it already. But let me see. Uh, customer LOB, I think uh, uh, already created here during the exam, right? So let's run this one. And of course, the title will be different now, right? Abdullah, uh, this is now basically a customer name. Right. So now today's session, we're done now. So what we have done is it seems that it's quite uh, simple if you see it from the output. The reason why I'm showing you how to create this because one, one of your report will sometimes need to do some analysis. And next meeting or probably tomorrow, we will now create an authentication for uh, customized authentication. If you are the customer Abdullah, you can you must only see your transaction not uh, along with the others so which means we will going to filter the 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 login who let whoever log in here and only abdullah's transaction will be seen similarly here by the way in the re transaction report you everyone uh, all the from the records of the transaction had been shown here omar and abdullah if I only log in as Abdullah, I must only see my list of my product which I have booked, right? Example, this is just for without payment yet, right? Similarly, if Omar will log in, he, he doesn't uh, need to see other records which is belong to the others like Abdullah. So only Omar uh, list of the products that he purchased, right? So which means that's why we have a customer ID that we have mentioned there. So we have this two different kind of uh, report and similarly also with if you want to use also the report that we have done on on the other version three, I think version uh, view three, I think this one. Yeah, if you want also to use this one, you can also work on this. Probably though we can add another report here if you want to see huh? edit the page. If you want to create another report within the same page, say for example, I will add another report here at the bottom here of this transaction report. And I need to select the items, oh no, 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 the regions. And I will going to use a report where in uh, we need the interactive report there, interactive report. Click this one there and probably we can just put it somewhere here, right? So there will be two reports here. And transaction report. Maybe I will make this one uh, transaction product uh, report details. Okay, so that will not be confused. Okay, now this is an interactive report by default, but we need only to link that one to your source, which is the view, right? So the view that we have created previously was version uh, this one uh, underscore three. We need to see each one of those products which is multiplied, uh, uh, which is uh, shown with that particular prices. So now I can now select that view, which is, what is that name? Let me just search this one. Uh, let me head on to view, it's better, All right? Enter this one. And this is another view that just now we have created, right? Save. And you can see now the difference of this page, the transaction report having two interactive report one here at the top oh okay there's no title it's appearing but it doesn't matter one here at the top it's just show the quantity though but at least here at the bottom uh, each one of the prices and quantity will be there so if we have lov for the product you can uh, apply lov for this one so that you can see the product name like this one iphone 6s uh, nike issues or computer table if you want also to see the customer names, you can also apply LOB or dynamic LOB for the customer names. All right, so this will complete our session today. So I want you to review this uh, this session especially uh, and this time. Oh gosh, okay. Fatima, how are you? <laughs> I didn't see. Fine, teacher, how are you? Thank you, yeah, thank you for that. Uh, uh, you submitted last week. I even showed yeah. to, to full so that she's having an idea what is the requirement for the title. 
Now, today's session is not an easy session, I believe. It's a more uh, advanced level of working on the views. I know that view is just barely you're doing only like a multiple relationship. Even you can do multiple views at the same time. But the most important is how I do this, why I did a lot of views, because I'm doing some aggregate. You cannot make relationship of joining if there will be a multiple information will be displayed. So which means uh, we have done three views, just, just, just only we have to show this very simple output, which is the transaction. Because I want only to see how much the price of that particular uh, customer had been purchased, regardless of how many items, right? Regardless of how, which products. The most important is the total amount of all the items that uh, a particular customer purchased. And why I did not combine it over the transaction report, which we have done it even last uh, last time or last week, because we could not do that one because that report, that view is already been aggregated using group, right? If I will link to this this view, it will not be matching because there will be there will no match. It will match the customer ID, but this one it doubles, right? So that's why these two different, actually these two views that we have compared, at least the, I think this is much more better, the second at the bottom. We can now remove this first simple view we have done last week. Why? Because this, today, this one is pretty much complete details now. Why? The total price of that product is there, which means only within that particular item, within that particular uh, product. Because actually, we can make some here in this interactive report. We can make data, uh, aggregate and sum. But only the problem is customer ID is different from each one of these. Because next time what we will do, we will create customized authentication. Whoever logs in only will only see their transaction. So now you're, what you're seeing here is better than what we have done last week. Because why? Only what we need to do, apply an LOV, dynamic LOV to product ID, you will also get the product name, right? Apply to the dynamic LOV also from the customer, you will also see the, uh, the customer name. Only missing here is, is the order date, right? So I think uh, if we want to customize this one, I need to add that order date from one of the views that we have created. But it's easy. We have to go back to the object browser, and add on that order date, add on that order date if you want to, to customize that one. I think, I think the best uh, view that we have created though, I think it's somewhere in the order in the B3, I think. Yes, I think somewhere here because the quantity is here. I can, I can add the order date here, right? I can add the order date. Uh, as long as you know the table, table name of that one um, with the order order date field where is that one though the order id order one here yes order underscore date okay order underscore date so let me grab this one if you want to debug your your field particularly in in v3 underscore v3 because this one is this is v3 Right, this is B3 at the bottom. We have used B2 and B4 uh, views from from the total price. Uh, technically, this is not literally not yet total price because the real total price was coming from this one, 55 and 1,750. If you want to compare that one, 55 is not showing here. Why? Because this is two separate. Uh, two separate product which is purchased by customer ID. Okay, if you want to see the total, uh, the, the date here, it will only multiple the dates. It will show the dates doubled here. So it might as well we can show the date in this total price B5 in this one, right? Which is what uh, field was that one? B5. Uh, what um, Views was that it's underscore V5. 
we can we can debug the total uh, the date here so that since that one is only purchased on that same date only so we can head on to the code we head on to the code only the problem is this is already two views coming from another view so which means we have to go to somewhere in the view tree b3 to add on that view field that comes with a date so somewhere here in the in the second view that we have created so which means i will just add here comma um order date i will put there on the last one and then i will just where is that order date come from from the orders okay copy this after the total price comma right yeah and that one is order date okay uh, order date order oops uh, let's make it capital though order underscore date all right oh underscore right so what i did i debug your uh, created view i just added the alias there on the top it should be in order and i added the sql statement that it needs to be shown also from the order id one All right this is the no i'm sorry why customer id um order date order date and of course we have to write the alias the same no problem the same order underscore date and save this one save and compiled and look now this is already edited from the b3 now you can now jump to b5 and then you can now add on that date already because it's already there in the b3 all you have to do is to go back to that code and again i will write here order date right it should be in it should be in order huh because i added only in the last one it should be also added the statement uh, that one will be also in the last one but this is coming from b3 oh uh, i'm sorry this is coming from b4 and b oh no correct from b2 this is coming from b2 okay one second okay i debugged the wrong field i think right i added the this one over here so i need to add it in the b2 is the date all right some it should be somewhere here right so which means only the thing is anyhow they are all the same date okay but only i need is to group this one okay if we will add one column here what will happen by the way it should be in in proper order here this is uh, from version two coming from order one Okay, if I write order date here, order date, okay, I need to add order date here. I need to, I need to add also from the group by order date also, order date. Okay, hopefully this will work though. Okay, now if I will check first, uh, I'm not uh, pretty sure though. Let me run this one with a SQL statement. Yes, indeed. Oh, this is quite simple. So I'll just I can just pull out directly now with the B5 because we have already uh, order date already there. So go back, going back to this one, go back, jump to the B5. Okay, cancel what I have done in the B3. Okay, let me just debug this one and add that order date from the last part of these uh, aliases, uh, order underscore date. And I need to add, oops, uh, I need to add that statement from this one actually. 
after the total price, comma, but that is coming from B2, from B2. Okay, let me just write it here at the bottom. Okay, now that order date. Okay, wait, remove this number of item. That order, order underscore date. Right, I think I'm good now. Save this one. And actually this B5 is already here, as, as already created over here. So it will not come directly automatic from the column, but otherwise you have to synchronize within your page designer. Why synchronize? Because we just added one field. Right click and then synchronize the columns and automatically the order date will be there. Save it, run, and order date should appear now. So you can see that the order date should be only done within the day because that is the only the transaction that had been done by Abdullah, which was uh, June 1, and Omar, which was uh, June 4. But each one of them already purchased different items and different products, and the most important are these total prices. All right, so similarly also, if you want to add that one to your, uh, this one, transaction report details, but only the order date will appear multiple times. Okay, so that will end up our session today. So tomorrow we will create, um, tomorrow we will create a customized authentication. We will write a simple PLSQL and we will uh, modify. I think we will going to modify, especially uh, I think one of the um, um, Fatima's, uh, now, ER diagram is pretty much the same what we're doing, but the thing is, what if you have a customer will go into log in from your system? So pretty much maybe we will apply here, add one more column, which is password, right? Uh, it, let me see also our schema. If we will add one uh, information from, from the table of the customer, which is, which is the password, right? We can we can add on to this one though. So tomorrow we will add one, one password field here and the customer ID will be the username. And we will write a simple uh, PLSQL and make a customized authentication so that now our transaction will be filtered. If Abdullah log in, Abdullah only must see all his transaction. Similarly, on the total prices as well. S same thing with Omar. If Omar logs in, Omar's transaction will be only be shown. It will filter automatically. But if I'm the admin, suppose I'm an admin, I want to see everything because I'm the administrator. Okay, inshallah, don't be absent within the week because this time uh, it's getting more advanced on the, uh, on the Oracle Apex. Because today we have done it like what my course project in BTEC is doing already. At the end of the day, report should be displayed. At the end of the day, report should be printed. At the end of the day, the report should be analyzed. Right? This is the report that we need in Oracle Apex. Right? In your certain application, this report will be also be helpful for, uh, for analysis, uh, analyzing all the data that entering from your table. So uh, may, probably if your uh, mini project is all about um, online shopping. If I'm the if I'm the owner of that company, I want to know how much how much profit I'm getting every day. I want to know how much profit I'm getting within a week or even one month. Right? To do so, you have to write a code for that. And that is similar to what we have done today. All right? So but don't be forget uh, we added the field. We added the field price because last time we don't have price in your product. In your, in your midterm exam, you don't have the price, right? If uh, just for your kind of information, I just added this one. Anyhow, it should be a complete schema if you're performing this, right? So I added that price column and that price column was under the product and it should be number. That's why all the aggregation and grouping that we have performed today, it's, it's uh, very simple on working on that particularly in the function sum 
or count. Count doesn't matter, but the sum is very important, right? All right, so um, I'll be now uh, closing this uh, session and this recorded will be shared once again upon stopping this record. And I hope 